their rights. Men are there to maintain and protect women. It is the job of the man, our job, to make sure that the woman can stay at home and she can look after the house and look after the kids and feel comfortable there and feel happy there. That's our job. To maintain them and to protect them. That's our responsibility. Because that is a weighty responsibility, Allah has also required something from the women in respect to the man. And that is that God made him, because Allah made the man, the maintainer and the protector, Allah gave him that responsibility. Allah didn't ask the women to go out there and earn the money, confront all that evil in there in society. Allah didn't ask the women to do that. Rather, He asked the women to care and educate and bring up the children with that love and that morality and that goodness that they need. The man, however, he has to, and he's responsible for your guidance in the deen, in the religion. He's responsible to make sure, although quite often it might be the other way around, the women often, alhamdulillah, and that's the righteous women, make sure the men are on the straight path. But it is our responsibility, and because of that, Allah requires that the woman is obedient to her husband. But when he tells her to do something and he commands her, she should do her best if it's within her capability. If, this is important, if it's in her capability, she should do it. And this is the respect. This is important in our society. The wife respects the husband and insha'Allah the children will respect the mother. And if the children respect the mother and the wife respects the husband, and the husband respects the authority of the emir, of the ruler. This is our religion. This is the basis of a true, stable society. But what you find is when the husband, when the wife doesn't respect her husband, the children will not respect her. And when the man does not respect the woman and treat her with justice and with the gentleness and with the kindness that Islam has ordered, Allah will put over him a tyrannical ruler to oppress and make his life difficult as he oppressed and made his wife's life difficult. And I believe this. I believe truly. If you look at the the Muslim world today, you will see you will see. The way the ruler treats the people reflects the way the man treats his wife. You will find it. The way the, way the ruler treats the people will be the way the man treats his wife. If he oppresses her, Allah will make a ruler to oppress him. So brothers and sisters, we know that our beautiful deen is based on taqwa. The fear of Allah, the consciousness of Allah, observing the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where we have to start with our family, rectifying ourselves. Brothers and sisters, my final appeal to you, please, is remove from yourself this jahiliyyah. This jahiliyyah, this ignorance that is the ideology and the perverted and sick ideology that has been propagated by Western civilization. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to remove that from yourselves. I find it so sad when I hear brothers and sisters talking about, well, I've had two kids, I think that's enough. Because we know you've been conquered already. They don't need to come and invade our lands. We've, they've already defeated us ideologically. Our minds have already been taken over. We've already begun to think like them. We push our daughters to get degrees, to become doctors, to become, uh, to become engineers, to become nuclear physicists. Look at my daughter. I'm so proud of her, what she's achieved. What? She's had ten kids and brought them up in Islam, that would be something proud that you taught your daughter to be like that. No, she became a doctor. That's what we're proud of these days. 
That is sick, brothers and sisters. That is sick. And that is, that is not what our religion teaches. And I'm not saying, I am not saying, please do not misunderstand me in its importance. Yes, we need Muslim women doctors. We need women to be educated, to educate our children. We need women to be educated, to open Muslim schools. So that they can educate our children in Islam, in the deen and in the dunya. But we have to understand, we must not get confused. We must not get confused and imagine that this is what is going to make us successful. Don't be mentally defeated. Don't allow yourselves to think with this false ideology. No, brothers and sisters, think like Muslims. Think with Islam. Think with the Quran. Think with the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And you will see, brothers and sisters, we bring up a generation who are like that. You will see. You will see. The success that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring once again to this ummah. And you will see that once again, brothers and sisters, that when our foundations are strong, alhamdulillah, Allah will give us the success of this life and of the life to come. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.